Now it's time for us to start looking at exploring how we're going to be connecting our devices together. We've already talked about switches and how switches allow us to bring LANs together. And we've been talking about how routers allow us to be able to go between broadcast domains in order to be able to do things like inter VLAN routing and things along those lines. But what we also have to recognize here is that we have different solutions in order to support large distance interconnection between our networks. These are going to be referred to as wide area network technologies. And what we need to do is we need to spend some time exploring what ones we have with regard to our different connectivity types in the context of our CCNA studies. And first of all, it's going to be the idea of what is a LAN. Well, a, a WAN is going to be a wide area network, not a LAN, but a WAN is going to be an interconnection of multiple networks. So WANs actually are going to be the topology used to connect these inter-networking infrastructures that we were talking about in the very first portion of the presentation. And what we need to realize is that WAN solutions are going to revolve around our layer three architectures. And we can create LANs in varying size. We can individual users, we can have mobile users, we can have home users, we can have independent offices and sites that are interconnected. We can have business partners that are going to be forming relationships with that are only going to be in existence for short periods of time possibly. So the idea here is, is when it comes to building a WAN, the actual definition is going to be pretty basic. However, we are going to have some governing rules with regard to what I would call WAN basics as compared to LANs. So wide area networks versus local area networks. And let's explore those. So what we see right now in this table is, is that the scope or the area of a WAN is going to be geographic in area. So in other words, it can span large distances. And in the concept of a LAN, that's going to be, it's going to be either in a single building or a small geographic area. It can be what we used to call a campus. We used to have a term called a MAN, a metropolitan area network. But the idea here is, is LANs are typically much, much smaller in scope. The other scenario here is, is who owns what? So when it comes to WANs, actually we're leasing circuits more often than not. When it comes to a LAN, we own the equipment and we own the ca cabling that we're using. For instance, if I use a WAN connection that I get from a service provider, in all actual fact, the service provider owns that interconnection. The only thing that they're going to do is they're going to stop their responsibility at that point of demarcation that we were talking about. So at the demark, it's going to be from the demark into my network, it's going to be my responsibility. But up to the point of the demark, it's going to be the service provider's responsibility. And it's also going to be their equipment. Therefore, it's going to be their ownership. The cost associated with a, a WAN recurs. Like I said, it's normally a leased circuit. So I'm going to pay on a monthly basis. But once I have a LAN up and operational, the cost is going to be relatively fixed because all I'm going to have to do is just maintain the staff and the personnel to work with it. But there's not a recurring monthly fee associated with a LAN when we start comparing it to, I'm sorry, there's not one with a LAN as compared to a WAN. The other element here was, is like I said, WANs are over large geographic areas. So in other words, I can have WANs in the United States. I can have web WANs in Asia. I can have WANs in the Middle East. I can have WANs in the central connection. And what's going to end up happening here is, is I'm going to use some type of service provider infrastructure to provide interconnection between all of these devices and all of these groups of devices. So where I have individual LANs, the moment I want to connect two LANs over vast geographic areas or even medium range geographic areas, I'm going to find myself turning to WANs as the way to be able to accomplish that. So when we start looking at it, we need to understand, like I said, routers play a significant role in the confines and the context of wide area networks. Because what we're doing is we're actually taking LANs, where this is a LAN, this is a LAN, and this is a LAN, local area network, and they're going to be in networks themselves. So they're ideally going to be on subnets. So for instance, let's say we have 10.1.1.0 slash 24. We have 10.1.2 slash dot zero slash 24. And here we have 10.1.2.0, 3.0 slash 24. So these are different networks. So the moment that I want to do inter-routing between networks, I need a layer three device. These layer three devices are going to allow me to go from this broadcast domain 
to this broadcast domain. Also, I have to recognize that I have to have IP addressing on the individual segments because if I don't have IP addressing on the individual segments, I can't create that concept of my routing table that's so important for me to be able to get information from point A to point B and control which particular path selection I'm going to employ to get there. Now also recognizing the fact that we have these different options when it comes to our WANs. We can have the internet. The internet could be set up to provide all of our interconnectivity. It's not necessarily reliable, and like we mentioned in the early portions of, this, portions of this VOD, there are no true quality of service mechanisms that we can employ on the internet to protect our traffic. So that's not necessarily the best way, but we can and oftentimes find ourselves in situations where we need to be able to do that. The other scenario here is, is we may have switch technologies. Switch technologies are technologies like ATM or Frame Relay. Now Frame Relay and ATM, they're going the way of the dodo. Most of the time, what we're going to find ourselves in a modern environment is we're going to have dedicated in internet through or throughput, like MPLS, multi-protocol label switching environments. We may even have concepts like dark fiber, where we're interconnecting all of our sites. But the main thing is, is those resources are dedicated to us and they're not te technically switched or shared. Metro Ethernet is another perfect example. So that bandwidth becomes ours. It's dedicated. It belongs to us and we can leverage it for whatever purposes we need in order to be able to obtain the connectivity that we want. Now looking at this, we need to recognize that we have different types of interconnections. We have the concept of what we've been talking about. Ethernet is a multi-access broadcast environment. We have some non-broadcast multi-access environments that we'll focus on specifically frame relay in the context of the CCNA studies. But we also need to recognize the fact that we have these point-to-point -point connections. Remember when we were talking about doing the point, connect, point connections, we were using the slash 30 mask so that we could only end up with having two IP addresses that we can use in the network segments. Well, those point-to-point -point connections are very, very handy because what ends up happening is, is they allow us to emulate Ethernet behavior, which means we're simple to manage they're extremely affordable and they're very flexible and almost every service provider can provide some type of point-to-point -point connection between individual locations. Now what we need to understand is, is the service provider has its entire array of routers and switches in its own infrastructure. And what we're going to find here is, is that if I want to do networking between these two sites, I don't necessarily want the service provider to partake in the routing process. I don't want to know about their prefixes, and Lord only knows that they don't want to know about mine, unless they're providing transit services, which ordinarily we wouldn't be doing that in an idea or of a network. So when we start looking at this, when we start making the configurations on these routers, what we're going to find here is, is that we're going to typically have point-to-point -point configurations because it's going to be through point-to-point -point configurations that I can provide as redundant and as a highly available connections between sites as possible. And through the concept of a point-to-point, -point, we also get the capability of being able to do resolution on our links. Point-to-point -point communications are quite simple. All we're going to do is set up the IP addresses on the different ends, and everything should be up and operational. So we're going to define the IP address on each of these individual links. We're going to no-shut the interface, and to verify it, all we have to do is do a ping. It's no different than if I had my GNS3 session up and running earlier, where I brought up that individual link on those gigabit 1.0 interfaces. I just assign an IP address to either end, and even though it was the Ethernet connection, I'm really and truly just using it as a point-to-point -point connection. Why? Because there were only two devices that were participating on that segment. So point-to-point -point is very easy for us, and it's going to be through the concept of point-to-point -point interaction that we're going to be able to create these scenarios where our infrastructure is going to be able to be connected on a hop-by-hop -hop basis. We can also very quickly find ourselves in situations where we can have full or partial mesh, star topologies, and it even lends itself to technologies like DMVPN, Dynamic Multipoint VPN Circuits, where we can use overlay technologies in order to be able to simulate connectivity between endpoints even though there's not a dedicated virtual circuit between them. So again, this gives us a lot of capabilities and a lot of, a lot of advancements and it's going to be the WAN solutions that we're going to rely on to allow us to be able to connect our offices or our networks across vast geographic locations. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.